now an existential threat. It was also corroborated by INEC Chairman Mahmoud Yakubu, and now we have the Governor of um, Kaduna State saying the same. How serious is this situation, considering that the election is fast approaching? Terry. Uh, well, you mentioned the name of two governors. These are people who should know. They are chief executives of uh, states, they are chief security officers of their various domains. And these domains are right there in the northwest, uh, which I, we want to call the theater of banditry and uh, uh, kidnapping now. We cannot continue to pretend that things are getting better in the axis of our country. Yes. We must give it to the security operatives. We must give it to the Nigerian Army and other forces uh, for making uh, immense efforts at, at curtailing whatever it is that is wrong in the axis. But the truth is, things aren't just getting better. Uh, in the last one, two weeks, we were making a joke of the fact that ah, things seem to have uh, uh, settled down a bit in the axis. But in the last three, four days again, you will discover that killings and uh, kidnappings are back as if it's normal business. And this, like Kerry Fry said, spells a lot of uh, danger and threat to the 2023 general election. Uh, uh, before now, talking about 2023 election, the worry and the fears has been about the Northeast. Mm -hmm. uh, there is insurgency going on there, and uh, would election hold in those places? And, uh, and if election were not to hold in six states of the federation, what would be the implication on the general election as well as the governments of the various uh, states concerned there? But I tell you that we, are, we should be more worried about the Northwest now. Because somehow, there is a little bit of uh, normalcy in the northeast. northeast. I visited Gombe recently. I was in Bauchi. And uh, you would understand that that uh, uh, fear, that palpable terror that used to be there some three, four years ago seems to have refused. calmed down. Mm. But you cannot say the same of Kaduna, Katsina, Zamfara today. Katina, I, I, I lived in Katina for about five years, and uh, it, it, it is so saddening when I recall what it used to be. When we would just sit in Katina City uh, around one, two during the day, I would take a decision that we are going to Gibia. Gibia is on the border of uh, Niger. I would go peacefully, just take a car, stroll down, go and see a few friends or whatever, and we we'll come back. You can't do that again in Katsina. People relocated massively from the, uh, the rural areas, as I want to put it, of the state into the city center and the state center. That is the capital city. The implication of that is that farmers left their farms. Cattle rearers can no longer rear their cattle and everybody is staying in the capital city because People are daily being kidnapped. Cattles are being rustled. People are being killed on one side. Then there is the issue of uh, people want to uh, vandalize train uh, tracks and all that in Katina. They are killing people on, the day, on daily basis. That's one thing we are not talking about. All right. So you discover that there are so many reasons to be worried about, not just the election, like uh, I said, but also the uh, census. It is, it is quite a great reason to be bothered. All right, Adewale, while you react to that, Governor Elrefi has again reiterated his appeal for the Northwest Theatre Command. We already have one in the Northeast. Yes. Well, I think this is not the first time the governor has spoken about threat to security, to safety of human lives in the Kaduna State. There was a time, I think less than one year ago, he wrote to the president complaining that the Ansaru terrorist group was trying to set up an operational base in the northwest, in Kaduna, between the forest, in the forest between Kaduna and Niger State. Mm -hmm. And I think even before then, he had continued to 
you know, challenge the federal government that look, um, this thing may get out of hand, but it's like we have interpreted the world so much. Mm. The point now is to change it. Mm. Kaduna occupies a very strategic um, place in the annals of northern Nigeria. It was the first uh, administrative capital of northern Nigeria. In fact, almost every politician of note in the north were ensure that they have, you know, a house in Kaduna. And don't also forget that Kaduna has the highest concentration of military institutions, about 15 of them. Nigerian Defense Academy, uh, the, the staff, uh, Command and Staff College, the DSS Training Office, Training School. You know, a lot of military institutions are concentrated in, in fact, that's the highest mm -hmm. compared with any other, uh, you know, any other state in Nigeria. So it's like, what is happening in Kaduna is like when the head is rotting, you can imagine what will happen to the body. So if Kaduna, with all the military institutions and everything, is having this kind of problem, then I think um, uh, the whole North you know, is in a, a very uh, big yeah. problem. And not just the North, because instability in that area is also a threat to stability in other parts of the country, even in the South, Kogi State and the other frontier states. So I think we have enough warnings. Um, the election is just about less than six months away. Mm -hmm. And there was a time they actually issued a, an edict. I think, uh, you know, Biniguari, that nobody must participate in elections. You know, it was mm -hmm. issued and we all read it. They said they should not participate in census. So now that we have enough warning, we are not talking about warning coming from U.S. intelligence, CIA or FBI of uh, M15. We are talking about a governor talking. So if we decide we not to take it serious, it's so unfortunate. Because when the Americans issue they are we are all running up and down. But it's a sitting governor who has enough information about what is well, happening. Is now true. warning that you know they can threaten you know the 2020. So what I expect the government to do is to react promptly and decisively. You know, what are the steps that the federal government wants to do in collaboration with Cardona State? and other states in the Northwest to ensure that this threat is not actualized. If we don't do anything, and we have enough evidence now to do something, and we have time on our side. So if the federal government fails to do nothing, then I don't think we can end up blaming All the right, government. so one of the uh, many uh, things the government is also asking for is a comprehensive and consistent sweep across the Northwest and uh, Niger State. Do we have the capacity for that? The country... You see, I, I always, I'm not always comfortable when doubts are expressed about our capacity to deal with insurgency and uh, banditry. But what happens, God forbid we are attacked externally? What happens if another country decides to attack Nigeria? Then it simply means we are going to go cap in hand to beg. But we cannot blame the doubters. Because we, we sh that if, 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 we must understand the fact that the basic reason why we put in place governments is for the security of lives and properties. By that, we begin to express doubts. We are helping these people in power to shack their duties. Mm -hmm. They must develop the capacity if they don't have it now. Because they must, as a matter of importance, protect lives and properties. So it's not debatable. Whether we have the capacity or not is something we should not be looking at now. We have the Nigerian Army, the Nigerian Air Force, and yearly we are voting monies for these uh, institutions whose major assignment is to protect you and I from aggressions, be internal or external. Now we have aggressions because I have, I continue to say that what we have in both the Northeast and the Northwest are the same thing. Until we actually accept that and begin to act in that direction, we still don't. Because we are still, like we did for many years in the Northeast, treating those guys with kids' gloves, refusing to call them what they are, terrorists. That's what we have started in the Northwest. If somebody decides that my main job is to kidnap people and collect ransom and kill those who refuse to allow themselves yeah. to be taken peacefully, what, who is a terrorist more than such a person? That's a terrorist. But we, are until we had to pass a law and gazette the fact that people in the uh, Northeast are terrorists, we didn't act in good time. 
I hope we won't do the same thing. Already bandits have been declared as terrorists. So we should deal with them decisively. You see, all we need to do, you will, you will agree with me that towards the end of last year and early this year, when government decided to be very decisive and hard on these criminals, there was a lull in their activities. Identified bandit leaders were targeted, taken out, and then there was some form of peace. But because we must avoid the fact, I mean, the fear, the fear of the people, which is because politics is coming, the election is coming, we are, we are slowing down. Mm -hmm. Governance should not give way for politics. Let us continue to give good governance to the people by ensuring the security of lives and properties. Okay. All right. Adewale, I asked that question because <clears throat> these governors yeah. say they have explored all workable options at addressing these situations. Well, you see, we are not in short. We, are, we don't have shortage of information. One of the most important things that you, when you are dealing with uh, insecurity is information. We all know that Ansaru left Boko Haram 2012. It's a splinter group led by uh, Kamba, which, who was said to have been killed, I think 2012 or so. We all know that these guys are operating between Kaduna, the, the forest between Kaduna and Niger State. We all know there are some of their commanders, you know, Al Banawi and many of them. And people always build honest myths. They talk about, oh, they are hidden in one forest. There is no tropical forest in the whole of northern Nigeria. Mm. There's no tropical forest. There's no dense forest. Mm. So in the, that you can compare what you have in Amazon Basin, in Brazil, in Vietnam, in Niger Delta. So they give that as an excuse, a recurrent excuse, as if, oh, it's a place that nobody can go. And it is shocking that in the modern day where you expect people to use surveillance drones, look at what is happening between Ukraine and, uh, you know, uh, Russia. Russia. You know, they are using uh, Sahid, as a, you know, Matrado by Iran. The drone is a suicide drone. If we go there and then, boom. It's not in all instances that the kidnappers have victims of kidnapping with them. In many instances, they are on their own in that uh, savannah. So we know where they are. We know the main actors. Mm. Then we know their source of funding. Uh, Ansaru is, is linked up with uh, Al Shabaab in Kenya and also linked link up with uh, um, Al Qaeda in the Maghreb region. So we know where these guys are located. And I find it very difficult that our security people are saying that, oh, they are in the forest, they cannot grab them. Unless we continue to believe the assumption that there are some people in government who are collaborating with them. If not, we don't have no excuse at all not to be able to, since we know where they are, not to be able to, you know, to deal with them, you know, using the appropriate measures. All right, thank you very much, gentlemen. Let's take a Monday from Yola. Hello, Monday. Hello, ma. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yes. Um, yeah, there's a serious problem of insecurity in Nigeria, and I think the government has to be proactive in fighting these terrorists. It's not when something happens. Hello? All right, we can hear you. Please go ahead. Uh -huh. It's not when something happens that we start looking for the solution. It's the written out. <laughs> this issue of flood, I mean, um, it has damaged the whole country and, okay, yes, it has damaged the whole country and it has destroyed many families. So right. the government needs, needs to be proactive so that it's not as Thank you very much. Three because right. a lot of people will be afraid to come out and vote. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, gentlemen, let's get to some cheering news from Katsina State. Bandits 